Hello Easton, I'm Tim Wagon with NCTV Channel 15, Division of the Avalon Foundation. Today we are here with Dr. Roger Wolger of Wolger International. He's been in town doing a couple speeches on death and consciousness. He's also an authority on Carl Jung. Carl Jung is a psychiatrist who has a book that is in the current in current events today, and we're really uh, lucky to have you here, Dr. Wolger, with such a current topic um, today. Um, Carl Jung has written the Red Book. Uh, it's a rather <laughs> large book. Um, it almost looks like a, in this shot you're looking at a, sort of an Alice in Wonderland sort of uh, uh, image here. This is the book, and we're going to get into this. See how much we can cover today, uh, Dr. Wolger. But um, welcome, first of all. Thank. How's how's Easton been? Thank you. Really wonderful. Very receptive audience, and a lot of interest in our work and consciousness and death transition. But we presented uh, Jung in the past, so there are already people who want to know more about the publication of this book, which has been very recent. Okay, we're going to get into the book in a second. Can right. you tell us about uh, Carl Jung? Uh, in general. Sure. Uh, his full name was Carl Gustav Jung, and he was one of the triad uh, with Freud and Adler. They usually put Freud, Jung, and Adler. One of the founders of psychoanalysis. Freud was the patriarch who began the movement uh, from Vienna. Um, Jung uh, was a bit younger than Freud, uh, grew up in Switzerland, and quite early on decided to have a career in psychiatry. His father was a minister, a country parson. Um, Jung grew up very curious about religion and spirit, had spiritual experiences when he was quite young. But he kind of put those aside because he wanted to help people and uh, studied psychiatry at the University of Basel, or Baal, in Switzerland. And um, it worked. he moved to Zurich as a young man and did a lot of research on what we now call schizophrenia and he invented the famous word association test where you have a list of words and you react and he he invented the word complex and later the word archetype and suggested different levels to the unconscious mind freud had studied the unconscious mind and in the turn of the century say 1900 19 104, 5, uh, Jung and Freud started to correspond from Zurich to Vienna. Uh, Freud was impressed by the younger man's early work, and uh, Jung was in turn very impressed by Freud. Right. And they corresponded for a year or so, and finally Jung made a journey to Vienna and met Freud. With, and um, he claims in his autobiography, the day they met, they talked nonstop for 12 hours. Right. He said, this was the first man of import I had met in my life, said Jung. And they became very close friends and uh, collaborated in the early psychoanalytic movement. For the first decade of the 20th century, they worked together. Um, Jung was very good at appearing in public, lecturing, and became very well known in the Freudian circle. And Freud expected him to be the, his successor. And in one of his letters, he said, you are my crown prince. But things went wrong yeah, I heard right. because Freud's basic theory uh, boils down to forgotten fantasies and memories in early childhood to do with sexuality. And Freud's theory is based upon the problem of sexuality and repression in our society among children. Uh, Jung was not altogether comfortable with that. He thought that uh, psychological problems had a broader origin. Uh, but in general, he was in, in, in agreement with Freud as ways of exploring the unconscious mind through dreams, through word association tests, through paintings, and so on. He was fascinated. They both were fascinated by this deep buried inner world that surfaces in strange ways. So somewhere around 1910, 11, Jung started to come out with his own ideas. And he believed that we carried not just uh, traumas from childhood, but we inherited from the deeper, or what he called the collective unconscious, the universal memory, conflicts that belong to our whole culture and get recycled. Uh, Explain that again. Uh, what, go back to Jung. Uh, he believed what again? He believed that uh, not only do we carry individual problems for our childhood, but we inherit from the whole culture, you know, unfinished wars, 
uh, the Christian problem of spirit and the bo spirituality in the body, uh, tendencies to split, to fragment, uh, become schizophrenic, are not just a result of personal experiences, but a part of a bigger cultural tendency. And so he proposed like a, another level to the unconscious mind. The personal memories underneath that were the memories of the culture. He and Freud finally parted ways because they couldn't agree on the sexual theory. Jung more and more distanced from it. And Jung began this much broader exploration of the universal human psyche in human history. Very, very broad uh, work. And at the center of his studies, he came across um, a, a universal myth, a story, what later he called an archetype, of the hero. The hero who has to battle with the forces of darkness and is sometimes destroyed but is reborn after his struggle. He has to slay a dragon, encounter a monster, uh, deal with dark forces. Okay, and, and if we could, how does the hero uh, myth play out in day-to-day -day life versus slaying a dragon? I mean, if you were to, you know, f forgive the analogy and yeah. sort of talk about it. In a well, there's two ways it can play out. One is the, the outer way, that um, when, we, when we grow up and come into life, we need what Jung would call hero energy to battle with life. We have to you know, be like young knights and heroes slaying a lot of dragons. You know, overcoming, that's symbolic, metaphorical right. reading of it. And there are difficulties in, in that, of course. Um, and then later in life, when we've established ourselves, the outer hero is not so important. But Jung says many people, in finding their deeper meaning of life, go through a spiritual crisis somewhere in the middle of life. And they turn inwards. And they have to look at all aspects of the self that they've neglected or forgotten, including some kind of dark stuff. And then the hero stands for the journey into the darkness, the inner darkness, okay. which you meet in great myths like Dante's Descent into Hell, which is hinted at in this book. You meet it um, in Shakespeare's tragedies. Shakespeare went through a dark period, depressive period. And it's often a struggle with death. You think you're going to die. You're all the energy in your outer life sometimes dries up and you have to sort of start again. And there's a, a transformation goes on in the personality with this journey into the darkness. How damaging is it for a person who may be going through that to, uh, to not recognize it and continue on and sort of ignore it? Well, you can't because if a, if a, if there's a very major upheaval, you will have a breakdown. You uh -huh. will you 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 will be unable to function, and you will be forced to go inside. Right. Um, the Jungians take a, a a very positive view of something like depression. They don't think it's a sickness that has to be drugged and treated. They think it's an opportunity to do a deep kind of inner meditation, which may be painful and may be difficult. Right. But you come out the other side, just as Shakespeare's tragedies transformed into comedies and romances. Eventually, new sides of the self will appear in these inner journeys. But it's, it's relatively few people who make that journey. They're the heroes, they're the, the artists, the, the culture heroes, Jung sometimes called. The people who transform our culture. Right. Okay. We're going to take a break in one second. We're going to get to the Red Book. Mm -hmm. Can you sum up in general Jung's psychological philosophy? Like he believed that sooner or later to become full human beings, not just puppets and playing roles, but to become full human beings, we had to have an inner life. And part of that inner life, we have to face what he called the shadow, the dark side. And that's when we go into the underworld or into the dark places. And we, live, we, we meet a very primitive part of ourselves. That Freud said the same thing. Okay. Civilized people repress the dark, primitive self, but it's still there. Dr. Jekyll always has a Mr. Hyde. You meet the shadow. You also find every man finds, Jung, Jung says, and this comes from, in the Red Book, every man finds he has a feminine side, and every woman finds she had a masculine side. When you've met these other sides, then the rest of the work is finding a balance. And when you find a balance, there begins a new process, what Jung calls centering, and finally he called it individuation, becoming your true self, 
who we are mixtures of dark and light, masculine and feminine, and yet we have a center, we have a, a higher purpose, which is spiritual. So his um, self-awareness, self-realization, uh, the essence of his psychology, knowing who we are inwardly. Okay, great. We're with Dr. Roger Wolger talking about Carl Jung. We'll be right back in a few minutes to delve into the Red Book a little bit. Thank you.